Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that I read a long time ago and that left a big impression on me because it really resonated with the way I thought of user interfaces. This was published in the Conference on Computer-Human Interaction back in 2006 and it takes a look at how the style of a user interface affects the problem-solving performance of the people using it. And the main axis along which this paper looks at this problem is of externalizing versus internalizing information in the user interface. What the authors mean by externalizing is when the UI in some form encodes task-related information as constraints on the interactions that are possible. And the idea behind externalizing is to reduce the cognitive load on the user so that they can devote more of their cognition to the actual task at hand. And we've all seen many common examples of externalizing these constraints. The most common one is when certain items are grayed out in an interface because those actions are not possible. So the authors in this paper want to compare these two broad styles of designing user interfaces, one which externalizes these constraints and the other one which does not provide this sort of assistance and they refer to that as internalized user interfaces. And they use the word internalize in the sense that the user has to internalize these constraints in their mind when using this interface. Now, when you frame it that way, it seems very obvious and intuitive that externalized user interfaces would be much more user-friendly and would let users perform their tasks much more efficiently. But what the authors here find, and this is what is remarkable, is that for many tasks, internalized user interfaces performed better because they made the users plan and think about the task more. The internalization, or in other words, the lack of assistance in the user interface made the users choose smarter solutions. And while externalization seems like a very user-friendly thing to do, there are often real costs and downsides associated with it. The most obvious one is that users often can't figure out why some menu item is grayed out and this causes more confusion. There's also a large body of literature that shows that learning is more effective when learners explore and discover things for themselves rather than being guided too much. The authors here also cite a lot of prior work that supports this line of thinking. When you try to solve problems in a user interface, that guides you too much, that has too much assistance or constraints encoded in the interface itself, prior work found that the users end up depending on the interface too much. Whereas without that kind of guidance, users built up their own mental model, their own plans and solutions, which led to a more well thought out and ultimately a more efficient solution. There's another piece of prior work where users were trying to solve a Tower of Hanoi puzzle the authors of this paper also performed an experiment in the past with two sets of users being asked to solve a puzzle where the first set used an externalized UI with many constraints which grayed out unavailable options and so on, whereas the other set of users used a purely internalized approach where the UI did not offer them this kind of assistance. And in that experiment, they found that the externalized condition participants performed worse. But more importantly, as they say over here, even after eight months, the participants in the internalized condition retained more knowledge about this problem. So we see already that there is a good body of literature that makes the case for not offering so much guidance to users. When you want users to form a plan and deeply understand the underlying domain that they're trying to master, it's better to have a more internalized approach to building the user interface. Which brings us to the specific new experiment that the authors performed in this paper. 
And what they're doing here is performing an experiment where the task is to do conference scheduling. You're given a bunch of conference speakers with various constraints in terms of how long their talk is, how many people are expected to attend the talk, what hours they would prefer to give the talk and so on. And then schedule the speakers into rooms that meet those constraints. The experiment participants are divided into two groups. The first group uses an interface with a lot of guidance. So that is the externalized set. And the guidance they get is when they select a speaker, the UI shows them in green the possible slots in the possible rooms that that speaker can go to given their constraints. Whereas in the internalized condition, no such guidance is offered. The users have to build a mental model of the constraints of the speakers and how to fit them within the rooms. So they have to come up with some sort of strategy and actually think about how to solve this problem. And there are several strategies one could adopt. For example, you could try to pick the speaker that has the tightest constraints and schedule them first. Let's see what the results of this experiment were. They measured the total time taken by the two groups and there was actually no significant difference between the two groups when it comes to the total time taken to solve the scheduling problems that they were given. The difference shows up in these two other metrics, time before the first move and intermove latency, which is the amount of time they spent thinking between two moves. Here, the difference was significant. Internalized subjects took more time than externalized subjects to make their first move. And also, internalized subjects took more time between moves. The other big difference was that subjects in the internalized condition made far fewer superfluous moves. And here the difference is pretty big. A mean of 2.46 moves versus 4.27 moves. So almost a difference of two moves. So how do we interpret these results? We can see that people in the internalized condition took longer to make their first move and they also took more time between their moves, which indicates that they thought and planned more. Also, there was no meaningful difference in the total time taken to solve the problems between the two conditions. But that's not really the point. We're not trying to optimize for the total time it takes to solve the problem. We did see that the internalized subjects made much fewer moves and they made much fewer superfluous moves. So it's as if their planning and thought helped them solve the problem in a more efficient way. So to sum up the experiment, there was no condition in which externalization actually resulted in a performance boost. But on the contrary, internalization did demonstrate some positive effects in terms of deeper problem-solving thought and coming up with more efficient solutions. So that was a quick look at a paper that looked at how people approach problem-solving when presented with an interface that externalizes constraints versus one that requires the user to internalize those constraints and that thought process. And how, even though it is counterintuitive, internalizing often leads to better outcomes. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.